G'day and welcome to the channel. In today's video, I'm gonna talk all about focal lengths. I'm gonna explain what focal length means, and I'm gonna talk about which focal lengths we need for wildlife photography. I'll do this by showing lots of examples, and I'm gonna go out in the field and take some shots using lots of different focal lengths so we can see what impact it makes, how big the subject is, how blurry the background is, does it matter how close you are, how far away you are. We're gonna talk about tally converters, we're gonna talk about crop sensors, we're gonna talk about cropping, so we're gonna cover basically five things that increase the subject in your frame, how to make the bird bigger ultimately. Focal length tells me the field of view, that is how much of the scene that I can see, and the magnification. How big is the bird gonna be in the frame? How much zoom do I have? That's the key with foc understanding focal length and knowing what focal length you need to take what shot. So what do I mean by a wide field of view? Have a look at this penguin shot. You can see the background mountains, the penguins, it's all in focus. We've got a wide view, almost what we would see with our own two eyes. And that is a wide angle of view. And I think I used about a 67 millimeter focal length. Now, if I wanted to blur out that background and bring the background in closer and maybe make the birds bigger, I would need to narrow my field of view and use a longer focal length. So I did just that. I used a 300 millimeter lens and I photographed a couple of other penguins and we can see the difference. We can no longer make out the background. It's nice and blurry. The aperture does play a part, but your field of view will dramatically change the look of your background. So the focal length makes a fairly dramatic impact on the size of the bird in the frame or how much zoom you have. So to test this out, I've set up a perch. So I walked back about eight and a half meters or 27 feet and I set up my tripod and I've filmed at various focal lengths. So this first focal length is actually 70 millimeters. And as you can see, we can see all the rocks. Uh, our field of view is wide. The perch is fairly small and the birds <laughs> quite tiny and it wouldn't make for a very good photo at this focal length. But as we increase the focal length, so we go to 200, it gets bigger. We go to 400 and it's starting to change. That bird is starting to get bigger, ground's starting to become blurrier and we can start using these photos. So we're now getting into the range of bird photography. Let's have a look at 700. So 700 makes the bird even bigger, but for this demonstration, the highest I can go is 1200. But even at 1200, the bird's almost too big to fit in the frame and the background is basically gone. We, we can't see it. So what a dramatic difference from 70 millimeters on the left and 1200 millimeters on the right. The focal length has drastically changed the picture and it's obviously enabled us to fill the frame with the bird. And ultimately that's the advantage of having extra focal length is you don't need to get as close to make the bird bigger. So I think it's fairly obvious, the longer the focal length, if you're stationary, the bigger the subject will be. And that's why birders will often have lenses of 300 millimeters plus. So just to give you an example of, of what 400 millimeter focal length looks like, this is my trusty 400 5.6. So this gives us 400 millimeters. And this is what I used for a number of years and I got lots of good shots with this focal length. As our focal lengths get longer, generally our lenses get bigger. So this is my 500 millimeter lens. And so it's only 100 millimeters more focal length, but it's a much bigger lens basically because the aperture is smaller and it lets in more light. So I wanna stress a really important point, And that is a longer focal length does not automatically equal better photos. A longer focal length makes it easier to capture great photos by allowing you to be further away from the subject. That is the main advantage of longer focal length is you just don't need to get as close, which makes it a lot easier for wild birds or birds you just can't get very close to. If you have a shorter focal length, you're gonna really struggle. Just to highlight this point about focal length not equaling good photos, take a look at this photo of a scarlet robin. It's terrible. So I had a lot of focal length, but it doesn't really matter what focal length I had. I was never gonna get a good shot because the bird's high, it's in the bush, it's in shadow. It's just an awful photo. Luckily, I was able to take a shot of this exact same species on a nice open perch. I was closer, beautiful light, nice background, and you can see how drastically different this image is. And I wanna point out that you can actually get some really creative and interesting shots at a wider field of view at a lower focal length. Look at this penguin I shot. I actually took this with a 70 to 200 and 140 millimeters focal length. I was able to do that because the penguins are quite big. I was really close and enabled me to get this shot. And I think that's the beauty of different focal lengths. It gives you a lot of creative freedom to take different types of shots. And that's a really, really cool and important thing. 
So I asked my wonderful subscribers what lenses they had and 80% used a focal length of greater than 400 millimeters, which is to be expected, and 40% having 600 millimeters or more. So traditionally the issue with longer focal lengths, such as my 500 over my 400, is just the cost and weight. These big lenses are a small fortune and just so much more expensive than these affordable smaller lenses. It's probably a good time to talk about zoom lenses. A zoom lens covers a range of focal lengths, so a 100 to 400 lens goes from 100 millimeters to 400, and you have the advantage of that flexibility. So if the bird gets too big or too close, you can widen your field of view to make the bird smaller. With a prime lens, your focal length is fixed. You have one focal length. And if the bird's too big in the frame, you can't do much about it except for move backwards. So zoom lenses are definitely becoming more and more popular, and I'd say the majority of people would use a zoom lens just for their versatility and their cost. So you may wonder, well, why do people even bother with a prime lens at all when zooms are so much more flexible? Well, the primes do have their advantages. Traditionally, uh, they were a lot sharper and they're also faster. What we mean by faster is this is an F4 lens, so it lets in a lot of light and cameras need light to focus quickly. So using this lens, you know, it focuses extremely quickly. And the other advantage of this lens, and I'll talk about it shortly, is it takes tally converters, which extends our focal length. So what lens would I suggest today? Well, if you're starting out, I would probably suggest one of the zoom lenses, say a 100 to 400 from Canon, the 200 to 500 from Nikon, and maybe the 200 to 600 from Sony. Of course, there's the Sigma and Tamron, which are affordable options. I haven't really used those lenses, so I can't comment too much but I understand many people do have them and are happy with them. So we've talked about how your lens can dictate your focal length and the size of the subject in the frame. I mentioned at the start that there's five ways to increase the size of the bird. So the second way is to use tally converters, or they're often referred to as extenders because they extend your focal range. So a tally converter is basically an additional lens that goes between your camera and your main birding lens. And by doing that, it extends your focal length. So this here is a, this is a 1.4 teleconverter by Canon, so it extends my focal length by 1.4 times. You can also get 1.7, two times. All right, so when I put that 1.4 converter on my 500 millimeter lens, so I times 500 by 1.4, and that gives me 700 millimeters. The focal length has increased by 1.4 times, and I've now got 700 millimeters, so it, it narrows my field of view and makes the subject bigger. If I put a two times on here, it would become a 1000, which is you know double the focal length, which is a great advantage. And it's often a fairly cheap way to get extra focal length. So the advantages of teleconverters is fairly obvious. It's a cheap and effective way to increase your focal length. This Scarlet Robin, this is what I would see with a 500 millimeter lens. Now, if I put a 1.4 converter on, that's increasing the magnification or the zoom and now you can see the birds are much bigger and then even with the two times the birds even bigger again unfortunately many beginners myself included think teleconverters are the answer to their focal length problems we go out we buy these teleconverters put them on take photos and then we get really confused when the images are soft they're blurry uh, that sometimes the camera won't even focus the focus is slow and we wonder what's going on we think there must be something wrong with the converter well, the reason is there's some disadvantages with using a teleconverter. You lose light, you lose a stop of light, so there's less light entering in. So the loss of light by using a teleconverter directly impacts the autofocus speed because the camera needs the light to focus. So if you had an F4 lens and you're focusing, even if you're at F8, the camera is still using F4 to get as much light as it can to focus. And when you take the photo, the aperture will get smaller and result in your photo. But when you put a tally converter on, your maximum aperture is reduced and you're not getting as much light to focus. So if we put a two times converter on an F4 lens, we're now at F8, so the amount of light is drastically reduced and this can heavily impact the autofocus of your camera. So there's only really a, a small amount of lenses that will take a tally converter and still work really well. So my thoughts on tally converters, if you've got a f4 or an f5.6 lens, you can use a 1.4 and still focus at f8. So DSLR cameras, the maximum aperture that they will focus at is f8. So if I was to put a two times on my 5.6, it would become f11 and the camera just won't focus. And even some older DSLRs like my 40D won't even focus at f8. 
I know some of the Sigma 6.3s will focus at f8. I do question whether it's worth it at all. The image quality degradation and autofocus may make it not worthwhile and you might be better off just cropping in camera. So a two times will really only work on lenses that have a maximum aperture of four or less. So say a 2.8 lens or an f4 lens. That really reduces the amount of lenses that I would even put a teleconverter on. But the really exciting news when it comes to teleconverters is mirrorless cameras. So mirrorless cameras autofocus differently to a DSLR. And what this means is that they will focus at much higher apertures. And Canon releasing these F11 lenses shows that. So my 405.6 with a two times on it, it becomes an 800 F11. I can use that on a mirrorless camera and it will still focus where it won't on a DSLR. So we're gonna be able to use teleconverters more with mirrorless cameras. And I'm hopeful that the new teleconverters for the mirrorless systems will enable us to get even more focal length than we were able to achieve on a DSLR. All right, it's time to talk about your sensor size and how that can impact the size of the bird in the frame. As you know, our lenses are circular and our sensors are rectangle. So what's going on there? So when we have our lens, it's capturing a round image and that image is traveling down the lens, it comes out the back of the, so it comes out the back of the lens as a circle so before it hits the sensor, you've got a circle image. That's what the lens is seeing, or that's what's coming down the lens. But the sensor will only take a subset of that circle, or that image circle. All right, so we've got that image coming down the lens. So let's say I'm using a full frame sensor, which is 36 by 24 millimeters. And if we overlay that onto our image circle, you can see it on the screen. So the area inside the rectangle is what the camera will capture. The rest of the image is actually discarded. And this is probably something people aren't fully aware of, is that the, the size of the sensor dictates how much of the image is captured from the lens. So let's have a look at what the final image would look like, would be the Scarlet Robin. And that's what, what would be saved to your memory card. So it's important to note that a full frame camera has a magnification or a crop factor of one, i.e. it doesn't zoom or change the image at all. But historically, a full frame sensor, so a large sensor, was expensive to produce. So camera manufacturers decided to make smaller sensors to reduce the cost. So for Canon, they produced an APS-C sensor that was 1.6 times smaller. All the other manufacturers went with 1.5 times smaller. And if I overlay the Canon 1.6 crop or APS-C sensor over our image circle, you can see how much smaller it is than the full frame. And we're gonna be discarding a lot more of the image. Now, because these sensors are much smaller, they capture a much smaller part of the image coming down the lens. The resulting image from an APS-C sensor saved to the memory card would look like this. The bird is way bigger than what the full frame image looked like. So the magnification has increased by the crop factor of 1.62 in Canon. So ultimately what that means is we can capture images that are zoomed in by 1.6 times by using an APS-C sensor. I've overlaid the other camera manufacturers, the 1.5 and the Micro Four Thirds, which is a two times crop, so it even zooms in even further. So the question you may be asking is, why doesn't everyone just use a crop body? Because it's gonna make the bird bigger or wildlife bigger. And that's a fair point. And there's a lot of really good birding cameras that people use. I'm talking the 7D series, even the 90D, the D500 on the Nikon, and all the Fuji bodies, and even the Panasonic and Olympus all use crop factor, and people use those successfully. So the main advantage of a crop factor body is you actually don't need as long a lenses to achieve the same result. So you can buy much cheaper lenses, so say this 405.6 for probably under $1,000 second hand, and this on a crop body is 400 times 1.6, so that's 640 millimeter equivalent full frame lens. So I used this with a 7D for years and years and took hundreds if not thousands of photos and I was very happy with that and it was more than adequate for what I needed. So there's definitely some disadvantages to using a crop body. They have a lot more noise. The depth of field is actually greater than a full frame so the backgrounds won't be as blurry on a crop body. They have less dynamic range and overall the image quality probably isn't quite as good as a full frame in the same sort of light. When I asked the community what cameras they use, over 60% used a crop body of some sort. So they are very popular for birding and they take really good photos. And if you're on a budget, crop may be the way to go. So if you've got the money, a full frame camera is obviously, in my opinion, probably the better choice. 
but you also need bigger, heavier lenses. So it's a bit of a trade-off. All right, that brings us on to the fourth way to make the bird bigger, and that's by cropping your image in post. So if I have my full frame camera and I take a photo and then I zoom in or crop by 1.6 times, I've effectively got the same image I would have had on a crop sensor body. The bird is much bigger, so I've cropped in camera and I've got a bigger image. What are the downsides to doing that? Well, you're probably gonna lose a little bit in image quality and the image file is gonna be drastically reduced. So if I crop my 30 megapixel 5D4 file by 1.6 times, it ends up with around 12 megapixels, so a much smaller file. If I'd taken it with, say, a 90D, I'd have 30 megapixels. All you need to know is that you can crop quite heavily to make the bird bigger, and the newer cameras are getting better and better at doing this. The, the D800 series has been fantastic, and the new Canon R5 with its 45 megapixels, you can crop that by 1.6 times and still have a 17 megapixel image. That's almost the same size as what my old 7D was, but in a full frame body. So it gives you a lot of flexibility and power when it comes to cropping afterwards. And ultimately that means we don't need to use quite as long a focal length that we can crop heavily. So if you can afford a high megapixel camera, then that may be a viable option. All right, that brings us on to the fifth and final way to increase the bird in the frame. And I would argue this is probably the most important. And that's how close you are to the subject. There is no quicker or cheaper way of increasing your field of view than just getting close. As you get closer, the bird gets bigger and the focal length you need reduces. Take a look at this, these images on the screen. One is a Jackie Winter and it's filling the frame. And the other one is of a little thornbill and it's tiny in the frame. One was taken with a 400 millimeter focal length and the other was taken with a full frame equivalent of 1134. So over twice the amount of focal length in one of these images. But you can't really tell which one because you don't know how close I was when I took these photos. The 400 millimeter focal length is actually the more zoomed in image, the Jackie Winter, and the longer focal length is the smaller bird. But with the Jackie Winter, I was probably only four or five meters away from the bird, whereas with the Thornbill, I was probably closer to 30. So the distance to the subject makes a drastic difference to how big the bird is. The further away you are, the smaller the bird's gonna be, obviously. And so by getting closer, the bird gets bigger. And this is how we overcome shorter focal lengths. If you have a shorter focal length, you just need to work harder to get closer to the bird. Here's a shot of my dear friend, Matt and I, we were photographing some shorebirds. He was using 800 millimeters, I was 400. So whenever we shot together, I just had to simply get closer for us to get roughly the same field of view. And this is probably the real world advantage of having that longer focal length is that you can be further away and you don't have to work quite as hard as somebody that's got a shorter focal length. And this really comes to the fore with wild birds and say if you're in the bush and you're trying to get close but the birds just fly away, with that longer focal length you just don't need to get as close, which is a big advantage. But sometimes the birds can get too close. I remember when I was photographing penguins, they were very inquisitive and they're very big birds. So they were often coming very close. So what do you do when they get too close? Well, you often just have to take headshots, which can result in some really nice images. Okay, so I've gone through quite a lot of theory about focal lengths. I hope you understood that and it's all made sense. What I'm gonna do now is head out into the field, take some photos with different focal lengths and see what results we get. All right, I'm on my property and I've come to where my robins are friendly. There's already one sitting on the perch here waiting for me. What we're gonna do is we're gonna do a range of tests with different focal lengths just to see how they work. And I'll change the distance to see how far away, how close the impacts. Um, we'll use different focal lengths, we'll use teleconverters, we'll use crop bodies. We'll see how all these things impact the overall picture. So I've got my uh, 500 millimeter lens with a 1.4 converter that's currently on a Canon 40D, a crop body. And I've currently got a 5D Mark III full frame body that's currently on a 70 to 200 zoom lens. My settings at the moment, uh, we've got direct sunlight, so I'm at ISO 800, uh, an aperture of f9 to make sure everything's nice and sharp. And that gives us a shutter speed of 1600th of a second, which is really high for hand holding. All right, so I'm currently at uh, nine meters or about 30 feet. And there's a bird on the perch. I'm gonna use 70 millimeters and see what that photo looks like. 
So I just took a heap of shots um, with the 500 millimeters on the crop body. Uh, we had too much focal length. The birds were too big in the frame and I was struggling to fit them in. And that's often an issue if you've got too much focal length. So I ideally need to step back further, um, which would work better. All right, I've chucked on the 400 millimeter 5.6 onto a full frame body. So we've currently got 400 millimeters focal length. So 400 millimeters on its own is pretty short. So we'll see what that looks like. I'm sure these shots that I'm getting are usable if I crop in. So we'll have a look at what they look like at eight meters. But what I might do if they're both here, I'll just go closer. I'm currently at six meters or 20 feet. This is much better, this is really good. I mean the bird's not huge, but we can crop that to quite a nice image. Might just take the microphone off and see how close I can get. So I have put a 1.4 converter on the 400 millimeter lens. So that is now a 560 millimeter focal length on the full frame body. That just gives me that little bit more reach, but that does make this an F8. And so I can only use the center focus point on the full frame camera, but it definitely slows down the autofocus and there's possibly a bit of a drop to the image quality. I'm at about 27 feet and this is about right. I'll be able to crop this quite nicely. It'll make for a nice image. millimeters 40d so an old 10 megapixel crop camera um, shooting at uh, ISO 400 6 40th of a second and f9 so the images should be nice and sharp still enough shutter speed handheld and that ISO we don't want to go too much higher with this old crop body crop bodies will have more noise about I think it's almost two and a half times as much as a full frame camera so it's just something to be aware of Okay, the Scarlet Robin just landed on the perch. I'd been waiting and waiting. I switched the camera off and typically it's landed on the perch while I had it switched off. But uh, I'm at, uh, what is this, nine meters or 29 feet. I've rattled off a, quite a few shots um, on the 40D 500. So we'll see what that looks like. I'm fairly confident those shots will come up quite nice. Alright, so I think from today's demonstration it's pretty clear that you can get good shots at almost any focal length. You just have to work a bit harder at those shorter focal lengths. I think the big takeaway is it's all about how close you are to the subject. If you've got a 400 millimeter focal length and you get nice and close, you can get nice out of focus backgrounds with heaps of detail. You know, if you've got longer focal length then you can go back further. That's the main advantage is that you just don't have to get as close to create the same shots. So if you have short focal length you're just gonna have to work a lot harder to get close to the birds maybe crop a little bit more but the advantage of that is you don't need such a big lens you can get away with say the 405.6 on a crop body and that's more than adequate and it's much cheaper than spending a fortune on a big lens so those are the sort of trade-offs don't worry too much if you don't have lots and lots of focal length maybe target tame birds bigger birds because they fill up the frame quicker set up water there's lots of different ways to go about it all right, that was a lot of fun taking all those shots. 
I'm always surprised with the files that I can get from the 40D, which is a 13 year old 10 megapixel camera. I mean, I know I had the, the best light and I'm using a really good lens, but it still produces good files for a camera that is that old. And I think you can get it for $200 second hand. So I really enjoyed making today's video. I actually learned a few things myself. If you like this content, maybe give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more of these videos, please subscribe. And of course, join the community and leave some comments below. It helps others. They often have the same questions and I'll answer those questions and we can get a conversation going. So until the next video, thanks for watching. Take care and bye for now. Really wagtail. At a wider field of view or a lower, or a lower, at a lower focal length. So using this lens, you know, it focuses extremely spark, it focuses extremely quickly. So the second way, what is the second way?